This is Cooperativism in the Time of COVID-19, an update of the Cooperative Development Authority. On March 8, 2020, after the pandemic caused by coronavirus disease 2019 or COVID-19 hit the country, President Rodrigo Roa Duterte issued Proclamation No. 922 declaring a state of public health emergency throughout the Philippines where all government agencies and LGUs are enjoined to render full assistance and cooperation and mobilize the necessary resources to undertake critical, urgent, and appropriate response and measures in a timely manner to curtail and eliminate the COVID-19 threat. CDA then responded to the said proclamation. Memorandum Circular No. 2020-03 was issued with the subject Regulatory Relief for Cooperatives in view of Proclamation No. 922. In the said memo, cooperatives are allowed to postpone their scheduled General Assembly meeting and election of officers for a period of three months. Cooperatives which opt to postpone their General Assembly meeting and election of officers under this circular shall be relieved from the following conduct of general assembly meeting and election conduct of community programs or activities involving a large crowd and findings of cda for the following violations non-presentation to the general assembly of the required reports and non-approval of the development or annual plan uh, land domestic air and domestic sea travel to and from Metro Manila shall be suspended beginning March 15, 2020 and to end on April 14. On March 12th, the President ordered lockdown of Metro Manila. On March 17th, CDA designed alternative work arrangements to offices across the country from skeletal workforce, four-day work week, to work from home. Movement shall be limited to accessing basic necessities, provision for food and essential health services shall be regulated, and there will be heightened presence of uniformed personnel to enforce quarantine procedures. After the declaration of enhanced community quarantine in the entire Luzon, Memorandum Circular 2020-04 was then issued on March 23rd, amending the previously released MC. Deadline for submission of reports is extended until June 15, 2020. As part of the requirements, cooperatives must inform CDA regarding the postponement of the General Assembly. For convenience, Email addresses of the central and extension offices were also provided for them to send their letters electronically. On March 18th, a memorandum was issued to extend cooperative name reservation. Application for registration of cooperatives which name reservations have expired or will expire on or before April 12, 2020 will still be accepted even after the said date. On March 20th, to avoid health hazards, a memorandum was issued instructing all CDA central and regional offices to adapt a work-at-home arrangement for all the employees, including job order and contract of service personnel. On the same day, an announcement about the said work arrangement was cascaded to all clientele. The link of the page where they can contact us was given in the said communication. Executive Director Ray Elevaso reiterated this work arrangement through another memorandum dated March 23, 2020. On the same date, CDA Board Member and Oversight for Agriculture Cluster Assistant Secretary Virgilio R. Lazaga issued an open letter to agriculture cooperatives and cooperatives engaged in agriculture proposing to make the agricultural products available online at affordable and reasonable prices for domestic consumption. This aims to provide assurance of food availability for all Filipinos.
On March 26th, a memorandum was sent to all cooperatives regarding the utilization of Community Development Fund or CDF, Optional Fund, General Reserve Fund or GRF, and release of interest on share capital and patronage fee fund or ISCPR, loans and other assistance to cooperative members. This aims to provide financial aid to the members of the cooperatives. On April 1, 2020, Republic Act No. 11469, otherwise known as the Bayanihan to Heal as One Act, was approved and immediately taken into effect. On April 2, a day after its effectivity, CDA issued a memorandum in compliance with Section 4AA of the said law, which states, to implement a minimum of a 30-day grace period for the payment of all loans, including but not limited to salary, personal, housing, and motor vehicle loans, as well as credit card payments, falling due within the period of the enhanced community quarantine without incurring interests, penalties, fees, or other charges. As for the cooperative sector, while the whole nation is under the state of calamity due to the virus, it is noteworthy that cooperatives in every region are serving extra mile not only to their members but also to the community. Every cooperative in the different regions has its unique way of extending help and assistance to members who cannot leave their houses for work and livelihood because they need to stay at home and be safe from contracting the virus. It is also during this hard time where the community and the local government units can count the co-op sector's cooperation. Support and resources are awe-inspiring. Truly, the spirit and value of Bayanihan lives within the cooperative movement amidst this distress. Aside from opening their service centers for loan availment of and providing assistance in cash and kind to their members, the cooperatives have also extended their help to the communities. Some gave multivitamins to the dedicated men and women frontliners as a way of extending their appreciation. There were also those who handed over a small amount of money to the co-op's own products such as groceries and snacks, meat, agricultural products, and prepared meals for frontliners such as barangay health workers, hospital workers, and the members of the armed forces. While other cooperatives donated chlorine, others have provided free sanitation and disinfection services to their communities. They ensure that there will be continuous supply of rice, fresh vegetables and fruits, meat, fish, and other basic necessities and other agricultural products by opening their business centers. Others have innovated their services by bringing the goods to the people via mobile market or having the grocery items delivered right at their doorsteps. A number of cooperatives donated to LGUs via cash or agricultural products. Because personal protective equipment are scarce, some cooperatives took the initiative of sewing PPEs and have them distributed to hospitals. Health frontliners are also given free transportation to and fro the hospitals. Cooperatives in hospital assisted in thermal scanning and getting the statistics of travel history of the residents. Others helped with information drive via distributing leaflets or posting tarpaulins about the pandemic. This crisis will soon be over, but the help that we have given to the Filipino people will forever be etched in each of our hearts. Sincerely, we thank you. As the cooperative pledge says, alone, I am weak, but with others, I am strong. Let us work together, and as one country, we heal as one.